Welcome to our course on asbestos release response. Inhaling or ingesting asbestos fibers can cause lung diseases and cancer. Ideally, we identify asbestos-containing materials and then either leave them intact or work on them with controls in place to prevent exposure. But what happens when we realize too late that it is present? Or what happens when something goes wrong and people are exposed? When there is an asbestos fiber release, it's important that everyone knows what to do to minimize the impact to the health of people in the area. By the end of this course, you will be able to recall what to do when there are major and minor asbestos fiber releases and first aid procedures for people exposed to asbestos. Before we begin, it's important to stress that people should assume that asbestos is in building, friction, and heat-resistant materials that were installed before 1981. When in doubt, assume it is present until an assessment by qualified professionals determines otherwise. Why do asbestos releases occur? One reason may be that people, such as homeowners, aren't trained to recognize when asbestos is likely to be present. Another reason may be that people don't understand the danger of asbestos fibers or underestimate them. People may also accidentally disturb asbestos-containing materials that they intended to leave intact. Demolition activities sometimes uncover previously hidden asbestos-containing materials that testing may have missed. Finally, controls, including engineering, administrative, or personal protective equipment, can fail. To determine how to react to a release, it's helpful to consider the size of the asbestos-containing material involved. In this course, we'll use the United States Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, threshold of 3 linear or square feet, or 0.28 linear or square meters, of asbestos-containing material. Anything smaller is a minor release and anything that size or larger is a major release. When any asbestos release occurs, the goal is to minimize the spread of fibers and keep people safe. Please check applicable regulations and your company's practices to determine their definitions of minor and major releases and what actions they require you to take. If their instructions vary from ours, follow their instructions. When in doubt, follow the more stringent requirements, whatever they are. For a minor release of less than 3 linear or square feet, or 0.28 linear or square meters, of asbestos-containing material, stop work immediately. Evacuate the area, closing doors behind you as you go. Once you are in a safe place, remove contaminated clothing and equipment and place it in sealed and labeled bags or containers for disposal. Clean your skin and hair using soap and water before donning clean clothing. Post signs that clearly state that asbestos is present and that warn people of the danger of lung disease and cancer. These signs alert people to stay out of the area. Alert your supervisor to the situation so that you can determine next steps. Only qualified professionals should work in the minor release area to remove the asbestos. They will use appropriate engineering and administrative controls, such as HEPA vacuums and wet methods, as well as personal protective equipment. Your supervisor will decide based on the type, condition, and extent of the dislodged material if your training qualifies you to clean up the release.
If you are present when there is an asbestos release, what should you do as you leave the area? For a major release of 3 linear or square feet or 0.28 linear or square meters of asbestos-containing material or more, follow the same procedure for a minor release and take additional steps to isolate the area. Restrict airflow from the release site by shutting down or sealing heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. Prevent access to the area by erecting temporary barriers such as impermeable plastic sheets with warning signs on them. The people who are qualified to respond to a major release may have more extensive training than those who may respond to a minor release. They are often asbestos and hazardous material specialists. After any asbestos release, do not re-enter the area until you are instructed to do so by your supervisor. The area is not safe until cleanup procedures are complete, the area has been carefully inspected, and air monitoring verifies that the cleanup was successful in removing asbestos fibers. There is a major release at your work site. You have received online asbestos training. Should you respond to the release? If it's possible that you got asbestos in your eyes, flush them with a large amount of water for 15 minutes. Lift and lower your upper lids occasionally as you flush them. If asbestos may be on your skin, wash it with soap and water. If you may have inhaled asbestos, move to fresh air immediately. If you may have ingested or swallowed asbestos, Rinse your mouth thoroughly, then drink plenty of water. Do not induce vomiting. The fibers are so small that vomiting is unlikely to remove them. In fact, forcing the sharp fibers up your throat by vomiting can cause them to damage your esophagus and may cause you to inhale them. After you take these initial first aid steps for any exposure, it's important to get medical attention as soon as possible. Your doctor will assess and monitor your condition. Remember that asbestos can cause lung disease and cancer years after exposure, so it's important that your doctor knows about any potential exposure you have. There is an asbestos release in your work area. You get to fresh air, remove your contaminated clothing, wash up and are waiting for word from your supervisor about next steps. Your eyes feel irritated and you're worried you got asbestos in them during the release or when you were cleaning up. What should you do before you seek medical attention? You should now be able to recall what to do when there are major and minor asbestos fiber releases and first aid procedures for people exposed to asbestos.